Hey, before we get started, let me say that this may be one of the hardest videos I've ever created because it is based in such a complex study. So I'd love feedback from you on how I did distilling a ludicrously complex topic. Thanks. Welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. In this content, we'll be delving into, admittedly, a dense topic revolving around a lot of molecular biology in understanding how metformin creates its effects within our cells and, by extension, in our body. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. This information is provided by a study that I will have linked for you as well as my notes and any minor amendments that may follow this content's publishing. With that, let's look at the data and as we go throughout, I'll try and simplify things without doing a disservice to the work or skewing the information. But for a full analysis, certainly feel free to check out my notes. Metformin is a drug that has been used now by millions for its anti-metabolic syndrome effects. It has been primarily used for a diabetes control, but it is also used for other reasons as well. The drug acts by inhibiting the mitochondria of our cells, therefore inhibiting the cellular energy production. This inhibition of cellular energy increases levels of molecules associated with low energy state of the cell, like ADP and AMP. These molecules are thought to bind a master protein known as AMPK, allowing it to be phosphorylated, otherwise stated, activated. With AMPK in its activated form, from now on called phospho-AMPK, it will interact with other signaling proteins that lead to changes within the cells. So what are these changes? Here, we're looking at protein levels of a series of different proteins, including their phosphorylated states. In some cases, this activates these proteins. In other situations, it deactivates these proteins. I'll walk you through it each time, and keep in mind, I'm not showing you all of the data, just the most pertinent, but all the data is linked for you. TSC is a downstream protein that regulates another master protein known as mTOR complex. mTOR is chiefly responsible for cell growth, so we see increased phosphorylation, in this case activation, of TSC by the addition of increasing amounts of metformin. Not only that, a subunit or smaller protein that is part of the mTOR complex known as Raptor regulates mTOR. If Raptor is phosphorylated, here it deactivates mTOR. So if TSC or Raptor are phosphorylated, they decrease mTOR activity. Here we see increasing levels of Raptor phosphorylation with the addition of metformin concentration. Finally, checking in on our AMPK master protein, which is known to phosphorylate both TSC and Raptor, we see a rise in phospho-AMPK, or activated AMPK, with increasing metformin. If we take a quick peek at one of the mTORC downstream proteins that facilitates cell growth when it is phosphorylated by mTORC, we can see it experiences decreases in phosphorylation with increasing metformin. So, at this point, we see an association with a series of signaling proteins and metformin. Finally, the researchers decided to mutate Raptor, so it could no longer be phosphorylated by phospho-AMPK as well as created another condition wherein TSC protein no longer exists, and another condition wherein both are true at the same time. This will tell the researchers if mTORC inhibition by metformin is TSC or Raptor dependent. In unmanipulated cells, metformin has the predictable effects described earlier. However, with Raptor mutated, metformin loses some of its ability to enact its effects on mTOR. However, when TSC is unavailable and Raptor is unmutated, it reduces mTOR activity. This implies that metformin is more dependent on Raptor than TSC. However, when both are unavailable, metformin loses its ability to affect mTORC, leading to uninhibited mTORC signaling. 
So ultimately, this data implies metformin by directly inhibiting mitochondrial energy production based on previous literature, inhibits mTORC signaling, including growth, metabolism, inflammation, and other outcomes through phospho-AMPK, although we did not discuss this data directly, which phosphorylates TSC and Raptor, which inhibit mTORC separately. Phospho-TSC inactivates a protein called Reb, which usually activates mTORC, and Phospho-Raptor inactivates mTORC directly. The most profound effects are through Raptor, however. I fully realize this is an incredibly complex topic, molecular biology is not simple, but I hope you have a better understanding of metformin's molecular mechanisms in cells, especially liver cells, as used in this study. With that, I hope this proved informative, and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the near future. Cheers.